you are going to have to go from on shape into a physical product to compete. So what are the best ways to do that? And one of the best ways to do that is through 3D printing, which is an extremely common manufacturing technique that I'd like to think most schools have at their disposal nowadays. So just a quick rundown. As everybody knows, it's obviously a 3D, 3D manufacturing type. You're able to create objects in the X, Y, and Z directions. Uh, some common materials, especially for Science Olympiad, where you know probably your plane and your wheeled vehicle are looking to be pretty light, and they're not under a, a huge amount of load. Things like PLA or PLA Plus or PETG are really common uh, filaments that are cheap, abundant, and will be plenty strong for application here. If you have something that prints ABS or nylon, seems a little overkill to me, but of course, use what you have at your disposal. Some different manufacturing considerations I like to bring up are, of course, material choice, like I just mentioned, as well as your line width and layer height when you're trying to make really small parts, your hole tolerances, and designing for minimal supports. And that's what I'm gonna show off here with the wheeled vehicle. And then, very important, how do you go from Onshape to your 3D printer? You export as an STL. So let's take a quick look at some of these tips. So as you can see here, uh, in the let's look at the rear axle support for this. So I'm actually going to swap back to the part studio. We can see that this wheel structure, it's a relatively big 3D printed part. Let me isolate it. There we go. Perfect. It's a relatively big 3D printed part, but something I thought of right from the beginning is that I wanted to make sure I could avoid supports. I don't like printing with supports. I think they make prints a little bit you know, riskier, more likely to fail. So always try and have one large flat surface that will be on my print bed. So I decided I was going to try to not have any structure hang below this so that this bottom face could be flat on my print bed and everything will just build up from there. Of course, I do have some holes right here which is why another one of the tips I had is that it's probably best to check your hole tolerances. Uh, you know, a test print of this is never a bad idea. It's likely that I'll need to oversize this hole for the bushing that goes into it because almost never do 3D printed holes end up being the exact size you model. If you oversize it a little bit, you'll pretty much always end up in a better shape. Um, yeah, and then nothing here is, is super thin, so we don't have to worry too, too much about our line widths. But if you were looking to maybe 3D print something for you know a flight submission, you'd want to know what the minimum uh, width of plastic that your 3D printer can print is so that you can design around that. Um, and just as an example, I took a picture of what my, I use Prusa Slicer as my slicer of choice for my printer. We can see that you know this entire rear axle structure would only take about an hour and a half to make at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which is lower than I usually print personally. I like to print fast. Um, but you know, you can very quickly make one of the biggest parts of this entire design. So it is very simple to go from on shape to an actual 3D printed part. And I should show that off as well. So if you wanted to take this and get it into your slicer of choice, it's very simple. All you need to do is select the part in the parts list of your part studio right click on it and export, and you will change the format to be STL. And just like that, you will have all the settings you need. I like setting the resolution to fine personally. And then when you export it, you'll download your STL and you can bring it directly into whatever slicing software you like to use. 